raised his hand. I just oh. in, in okay. the. Uh, All right. Well, I'll definitely open it up to him if he has any questions. Hi. Sorry. Uh, can you can you hear me now? Yes, sure can. All right. <laughs> My bad. So um, for resolution 734, I'm curious, how is it decided how much money will be allocated per town and per project? Uh, and for the resolution uh, regarding the turf field in Snyder Park, oh, what exactly does the contract cover? When will it be completed roughly? Um, and why, why now to uh, allocate around one and a half million dollars for a turf field? Uh, what exactly was the, um, is the intended purpose for it? And uh, for uh, the ordinance, I'm just wondering uh, what exactly is all the borrowing for and uh, you know, what improvements will actually uh, be detailed in that. Uh, that should be all, thank you. Okay, uh, 734, uh, Vicki, can you give uh, a little bit, unless uh, Chairman Hudak wants to, e either one of you, a little bit just on the process and how it works and how we allocate those funds? Um. Uh, Vicky, I'll, 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 no, Vicky, why don't you go through it first? I'll, I'll, I'll okay. pile on if I need to. Okay, so for um, that grant, which is the Green and Union County grant, which provides dollar for dollar or tree for tree match, the freeholder board decides through the Open Space Trust Fund Committee in advance how much money is going to be available. They put out applications, municipalities apply, the trust fund, and then the freeholder board review and award and they do a similar um, they provide a similar method for the kids rec trust grants okay. yeah I, I think that, i think that's a sufficient response all right very good thank you thank uh, you where's uh, mike brennan if he can speak a little bit more to the the project scope maybe with a little bit of the timeline uh, that would be helpful for the uh, for the caller Certainly, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, the, um, as you mentioned, when, when we were able to um, receive the bids um, and uh, in a timely manner, we wanted to get the, uh, someone on board before the winter season. So uh, waiting for another month to start this project at the next board, we figured if we had the opportunity, it would give us um, some additional time while the weather is nice to get this project uh, underway. Okay, do you have a rough time frame for when that could uh, begin the time um, frame for that? It's uh, weather dependent, obviously, but um, we are hoping to have all the site work done um, by uh, January and then the, um, the turf portion in the early spring. Okay, all right, very good, thank you. Uh, we did have questions uh, on the borrowing or the capital plan and uh, County Manager Oatman or Director Haler, if you want to kind of help uh, answer that question, that would be helpful for us. Well, through you, Chairman, the multi-purpose bond ordinance before you this evening is in the amount of $24 million. And that's to fund our 2020 capital budget for various items dealing with supporting the Union County College, the VOTEC on their normal operating, their normal capital requests funding our annual roadway improvement projects, um, also appropriating the grants that help offset that uh, roadway project. We're also looking to do some telecommunication upgrades in the IT department. We have some park improvements at the deserted village in order to conduct a master plan and a review. Um, and we also have some resurfacing of playgrounds at various locations. So the end, my apologies, one last items is the renovation dispatch center. The shared services uh, agreements have been enormously successful. And as a result, we have to expand our shared, our dispatch center to accommodate the added municipalities coming on board. Okay, Director Taylor, thanks for that information. Uh, I am going to go back. Um, Mr. Patterson asked a question about, about vote by mail and I inadvertently um, skipped over that part. And I do want to ask since we have our um, administrator of elections on the board, I want to ask her to respond to, the, to those questions and, and those actually good questions. Through you, Chairman, I'm happy to answer those questions. Um, first, we do receive notification from local registrar's office as well as the State Department of Health 
um, when someone passes away. So if we do receive a ballot um, after they've passed away, it is flagged in the state voter registration system and um, the vote will not be counted. Um, additionally, we do often receive ballots back from folks who have passed away shortly, um, passed away and not been able to vote their ballots. And we'll get little love notes on the envelope that tells us from their loved ones that they passed away and um, we will remove them from the voter registry. Um, so ballots that are returned as under undeliverable, we first research to make sure that the ballot cannot be forwarded. So um, for example, there was an issue in the primary um, with the way the state voter registration was printing labels to residents living in apartments. The apartment numbers were not printing out on the labels. So when all those ballots came back, we quickly updated all of the apartment information and the county clerk was, re was able to reissue those ballots in time for those voters to be able to vote. So we do review every ballot that comes back as undeliverable to make sure that it can be, um, to make to see if it can in fact um, be reissued and if there was a mistake in the address. Um, if they have moved and it was returned as undeliverable because they have moved, they are um, coded as inactive in the voter registration system. So they will not be able to vote in future elections. Um, <clears throat> and the final question relative to the yellow sheet of paper asking for um, the voter to provide ID. Pursuant to the Federal Help America Votes Act, voters have to provide identifying information, whether it be the last four digits of their social security number or their driver's license number and able to register in order to register. So if a voter registers but does not provide this information, they are required to show ID um, before we can accept their ballot. So they would have to include a copy of ID um, in the outer envelope, not in the certificate envelope, in the outer envelope um, when they're mailing back their ballot. Um, and the same thing happens if they decide to go vote provisional. The provisional ballot certificate asks for either driver's license number or the last four digits of the voter's social security number so that we can verify that they are in fact registered active voter and entitled to vote. I knew you'd have uh, excellent answers for that. So so thank you, uh, Madam Administrator. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm sorry I skipped over that. I got a little flustered when Mr. Patterson said he agreed with me. So I, uh, sorry I went over that, uh, but I'm glad we, we went back and I'm glad uh, you were able to clarify that. It's important. There's a lot of misconceptions about uh, voting. It's very different this year and I'm glad you could clarify that. And as other things come up, I'm sure you're working to clarify that stuff as well. So nice work over there. All right. Uh, 